It was only 11 seconds from the time the referee dropped the puck until he blew his whistle. We have a BU player down in the corner. It's Travis Roy. But for me, those 11 seconds proved that the little kid from Yarmouth, Maine did make it. My freshman year in high school, I, I went into my bedroom and I set my goals. And how many goals I would have scored my, my freshman year to my dream goals of playing Division I college hockey and playing the NHL. And they were very specific and they were laid out. And I had my plan, I had my course. You know, eventually I ended up at Boston University. It was defending national championship team. There were six freshmen, only four getting into play. And a couple days before our first game, Coach Parker gave me the news that I would play. Knowing that my parents were going to be in the stands, my sister. And this was the big night. This was the dream that we all had. It was the opening game of the season, and we were the defending national champions, so it was a big night because we were going to be raising our national banner. Travis was on the second line, I believe, with uh, Chris Drury and Mike Greer, two pretty good players. I'll never forget supping out on that ice for the first time. You know, it was finally my stage. It was my turn, and we won the face off. The puck got dumped into the offensive zone, and I skated in there just as fast as I could, and, and maybe I was a little too hyped up and excited, and I thought, you know, I'll deliver the big check, you know, sort of make my presence known. And I just didn't hit him as square as I thought, and lost my balance, and I hit my head, and, and it sort of fell to the ice. My brain was sending the message to get on my hands and knees and get back up, and and to just have no response from my body was, you know, something was bad, and, and that was it. It was the neck brace and the stretcher and the ambulance and, and a whole new journey. I went over and visited him, I think, every single day he was at that hospital. And we were talking, and then he said to me, hey, Coach, can you do me a favor? I said, yeah, what? He said, well, you scratch my nose. <laughs> Excuse me. And I'll never forget that. And I, I just realized, this kid's got big problems. Sure, I could have wallowed in self-pity and probably end up bitter and resentful, but I still had so much to be fortunate about. I still had my mind. I still had the ability to decide what the outcome was going to be. All those skills that make for success as a, as a collegiate athlete certainly have paid great dividends as I tried to put my life back together. What it gave me is the desire to compete and the whole idea of not giving up and trying to make the best of it. To the time management side, to setting priorities. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm Wilmington welcome to Travis Roy. It'll be 16 years in October. I'm amazed at the quality of my life, how full and independent it is. And eventually I realized that, wait a minute, there is, there is no difference between the paralyzed Travis Roy and the able-bodied Travis Roy that the values that made me successful before my accident were going to be the exact same values that made me successful afterwards. The Travis Roy Foundation has two main goals. Half the money goes towards research. I'm hopeful that there will be a medical breakthrough. The other half of the money goes towards individual grants for wheelchairs, for voice-activated computers, simple home modifications, and the more we can provide that equipment, the more independent, the more fulfilling people can live their lives with, with this disability. To know that there's another generation that won't have to deal with the losses and the sadness and the devastation that a spinal cord injury causes, that'll certainly be what I'm most proud of of all, is to know that the foundation helped to bring about that cure. I think he's been an unbelievable role model for all of us to and I don't think there's a better example of anybody accepting their situation and, and being the best he can be at that. There's times in our lives when we choose our challenges, and there's other times when the challenges simply choose us. It's what we do in the face of those challenges that it really defines who we are, and, and more importantly, who we, we can and will become. To learn more about the Travis Roy Foundation, please visit travisroyfoundation.org.